and feel free to take it away. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And today we'll discuss two subjects that are very close to my heart, and that is culture and strategy. And I don't believe enough a company spend enough time on a continuous basis speaking and discussing culture and strategy. So what I would like to do is, if I can get this to work, there we go, is just give you three points that in the end of the day, if you take these points and implement it, I believe I've achieved something during this webinar. The first one is excellent customer service can be a differentiator in any industry in South Africa. And this for me is not a strategy, but a culture and a culture that must be driven from the top. If it's not driven from the top, it will not work. Secondly, having the correct strategy that everyone in the company understands and are awarded on is the foundation of any successful company. To have the correct strategy is important, but also to reward people on so they can understand the strategy and how important it is, is the absolute foundation. And then thirdly, ongoing and clear communication is key to the success of changing any culture as well as any strategy. And I think communication by itself is also something that we don't do enough of. We say we do a lot, lot of communication, but I will challenge any company to tell me that they're actually doing enough communication. So let's look about it. There's a lot said about culture versus strategy. There's even books written about culture will eat strategy for breakfast and things like that. I believe the one is as important as the other one and we shouldn't put the one ahead of the other one. Let's look at culture first and discuss culture. What's the definition of culture? Culture is the ideas, customs and behavior of a particular group of people or society. Now, how does that relate to us as a company? Culture is how people react with our thinking, our natural behavior. So let me give you an example of this. What is your culture? When you were brought up, people always said, you a good boy, at, at your upbringing, because you're doing things and you're doing things without thinking about it. And that is really what culture is all about. So if you have a self-safety culture, you will see possible safety hazards without even looking for them. And you will be safety conscious even at home. So when there's a culture created in a company and you are part of that culture, let's call it in this case, the safety culture, that safety culture doesn't stop when you get to the gate of the, or the, door of the office when you go home. That continues because that's the way you think and you behave without thinking. And that is important to realize what culture is all about. So let's speak about customer focus. This is a buzzword that many companies over the last 10, 15 years have included in their vision statement, their mission statement, but do they really have a customer-focused culture? That's the question. Our industry and many industries in South Africa is not known for good customer service. You'll hear a lot of customers complain about bad customer service. Think about it when you go to Macro, to Game, to Dion's, to all of these convenience stores where you, or stores where you want to buy something, and what do you think of their customer service? Some is good, some is not good. But that is generally, we've got a bad customer service in South Africa, and particular in our industry. Now, how do you change customer focus? Or how do you get customer focus? Customer focus can only be there and be driven from the top. If it's not driven from the top, it will not happen. And let, let me give you two examples. Uh, let's first get to good customer service is not saying yes to everything the customer wants and asks for. Because that is something I, I hear a lot 
when people speak about, oh, there's not customer service, they don't want to give me what I demand and things like this. When you've got a customer, good customer service, you look after the customer, you understand the customer, you understand his KPIs, what he's trying to achieve, and you assist him with that. That doesn't mean you need to say yes to everything the customer asks. And it's really important to understand the customer and the customer's KPIs. And we'll speak a bit more about that later. So let me give you the first example. BNR Industrial Organization is a company in Austria that was acquired by ABB some years ago. And the reason why I want to speak about BNR is they had, had and have a fantastic customer culture. Now, if they employ a salesperson, and irrespective of how many years experience that person has got, that person will not interact with a customer at least nine months. And in that nine months, they ensure, number one, the salesperson understands the culture of the company, that the company is extremely customer focused, and they make sure that he's got enough, he or she has got enough knowledge about the products and systems to be able to serve the customer and to be able to recommend to the customer the best solutions before they allow that person to interact with customers. Now, a lot of people will say that's a waste of a lot of money, paying a, a salesperson for nine months before he's allowed to interact. But they found it necessary to do to ensure that their culture of customer focus is maintained. And they've been extremely successful in that. So the culture in the company is totally customer focused. For you to do what they've done. They appointed a salesperson and for nine months, that person needed to do and to learn how to act with customers before they unleash the salesperson on customers. Now, customer change. A lot of people will say, and you read in a lot of books, that culture change takes many years to do. Culture change can only happen if the behavior of the person at the top changes. And the person, it's not what he says, he or she says, but it's how they behave. That will change the culture. So let me give you two examples here. One is ABB, a company that I worked for for seven years. We got a new CEO, he came in, and he decided he wanted a safety culture in the company. Yes, the company had all the safety issues under control, we thought, but there were still too many casualties in the working environment. So he started driving the safety culture. He started making sure that everybody in the company on a global basis understands how serious safety is. It was built into all management's KPIs, and he was the one that drove it. If anything happened and there was a fatality in any of the projects or in any of the plants internationally, the people responsible in that country, as well as the divisional head, had to appear before the executive committee to explain exactly what happened, why it happened, and what they're doing to prevent it in future. And that was not a pleasant discussion, and nobody wanted to be on the red carpet. That changed that culture within two years for a real safety culture. So in within two years, a global company could change their safety culture because it was driven from the top and driven very hard. I'll give you a, example that shows the opposite. A South African company that I won't name the company had a CEO that also came in and wanted to drive a safety culture. And after about six months, he got quite irritated with people because the, the culture just didn't want to change. And he went onto the floor and spoke to some of the people on the floor and said, why is our culture not changing to a safety culture? What am I doing wrong or what needs to be changed? And one of the employees looked at him and said, sir, 
have not got a safety culture. And he was quite taken back because he preaches about safety every meeting, wherever he goes. They said, sir, we see you driving around town on your motorbike without a crash helmet. We also see you not wearing your safety belt when you drive on weekends in your car. So that means for us, you haven't got a safety culture. So why should we have a safety culture? He changed his behavior and immediately the safety culture in the company changed. So it's not always what you say, but it's how you act and behave that's extremely important. My personal philosophy, customers and employees come first and profits, profit will follow. That may be hard to swallow for a lot of managers, but really if we look after our customers and our employees and they feel appreciated, then appreciated and we make sure that they reach their personal goals, then profits will follow because you will have happy employees, satisfied employees, you'll have satisfied customers, and that combination can only mean the company can make profit. One of the things that surprises me a lot when we speak about customer focus is unhappy customers. How many times do I see managers and salespeople and senior managers not wanting to speak to an unhappy customer? For me, that is a bell that goes off that says it's not a customer-focused company. And one of the things that we must remember, cost of a new customer is five times higher than retaining customers. So we need to look after our customers. And a happy customer is still a customer because he is speaking to you. When that person stops speaking to the company, then you've lost the customer. So before I give you the example of Tafelberg Furnitures, I want to tell you that personally, I enjoy speaking to unhappy customers because it's amazing to see, yes, you get an earful in the first conversation, and then you put things in place to assist the customer to resolve the problem. And open and honest communication with the customer means that the customer starts seeing that you're looking after his or her interest. And based on that, that customer will turn. And I've seen many customers in my career turn and become much more loyal customers because you spoke to them and you resolved issues when they were unhappy. And that's a message that I definitely want to give everybody from salespeople to middle management to senior management. Speak to unhappy customers. Now, Tafelberg Furnitures is a company that I believe has got a lot of customer focus. Why do I say that? When I walk into that company, there is people that want to assist you. They listen to you and then they recommend to you based on what your needs are, a product. I don't try and sell you a product that they want to sell. They sell you a product that meets your needs. And that for me is important. Now, the best advice a manager ever gave me, and he said he got it from his mother, is that you've got one mouth and two ears. So when you work with customers, employees, use it in that ratio. That means you listen a lot more than you talk. I've seen too many customers, when salespeople walk into a customer, that they take over the conversation and the customer hardly gets a word in. That is not customer service. Go in, listen to what the customer says and based on what he is telling you, then you can engage with him because then you understand his needs and that's important. So before we get to strategy, let's just finish off on culture. So culture can be changed in any company in a short time. Culture must be driven from the top and a customer focused culture can be a differentiator for any company in this country, in any industry and specifically in our industry. So let's speak about the second topic, namely strategy. 
Strategy is a plan of action designed to achieve a long-term or overall aim. That is what strategy is. Strategy is not something that you do once a year. How many managers do I see and how many companies that go on a whole week session? They design a fantastic strategy back to the office and that strategy document goes into the bottom drawer and they take it out next year for the strategy session. Now that is not what strategy is all about. Strategy needs to be looked at on a regular basis. That does not mean you change it on a regular basis, but it needs to be looked at and made sure that it's still relevant. And one of the things, the impact of COVID-19 on your strategy, if you have not revised and re-looked at your strategy based on the impact of COVID-19, then something is seriously wrong. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure your strategy today is incorrect. Having the correct strategy that everyone in the company understands is a foundation of any successful company. And yet, and listen to what I'm saying, the correct strategy, of course, that's very important. That everyone in the company understands. And I think this is where a lot of companies go wrong. They've got a strategy, your senior management understands your strategy, but when you go one or two levels down and you speak to people about the strategy of a company, you just get a blank stare back because nobody has actually informed them about the strategy of the company. And for me, that cannot be a successful company if your employees don't understand and know what the strategy of the company is. Now, how do you get to a strategy? And let's look externally because you start externally with a market analysis. Strategy begins by looking at the market, seeing what is available in the market, segmenting the market and analyzing it in terms of growth per market segment. Example, we've got a company that works in generation. Now, normal generation, fuel, and that type, fossil fuel generation and that, that's not going to grow as a market segment based on a lot of issues. If we look at generation and we look at renewable generation, then that will definitely grow. So by knowing which market segments that you play in will grow and will not grow or will decline, that determines the strategy that you need to implement going forward. Now, it doesn't stop there because you need to look at the company's market share per segment. Because if you've got a 2% market share in a market segment that is not going to grow, but not going to decline, then there's still growth opportunities for you and your company in that market segment. But if you've got a high market share, 15% or whatever, and it's a declining market segment, then you must look at making sure that you've got and focus on your strategy on maybe keeping whatever business will come from that market, but making sure that you get into other market segments that are growing, that you can grow your company. If you are not the number one or two player in the market, then your company can always grow, even if the market segment is stagnant and that is important so it's important to look at market segments which ones are growing which ones are declining and then to determine where you lie within that market segment now this sounds very simple and it's a good exercise to go through and it will clearly indicate to you if you are playing in the right markets and if your strategy is correct when you've done the market analysis, that means per market segment, looking at growth or declining, then the next thing you need to do is look at a detailed customer analysis, because that will determine where your strategy needs to focus on. So it's important to know what the customer spend is in terms of capex and opex spend in that market segment. So if you've determined market segment A, is the one that you want to play in, 
and grow your business in. The second part of that is do a customer analysis to see which customers are in that market segment and what are they going to spend over the next five years on CapEx and OpEx spend. Now, this sounds very simple and should in reality be quite simple. But it is not simple if you're not close enough to the market segment. So you will work out now the share of wallet per customer must be calculated. That means if a customer spends 100 million, what you can offer is 10 million and you have only got orders from them of 1 million, that means your, your share of wallet is 1 million and 10%. So that means you've got 10% market share for your offering with that customer. And you need to do that with all the major customers in that market segment. Then you can add, devise a strategy of how you can increase your share of wallet. One of the ways is offering additional products or services or systems to that customer. If that's not possible, then you need to look at how you can change your offering or the way you interact with the customer to grow your business. But this is one of the easiest and most cost-effective ways of growing your business with current customers. So number one, you looked at the market segment. Secondly, you look at the customers in the market segments and that will clearly indicate to you where you want to go. Now, that means you've now got more or less a strategy that you know what market segments you want to play in and which customers you want to target and how you want to target them. Then the next extremely important step comes, and that is converting a good strategy into actionable items for everyone in the company. And that is absolutely key, that everybody works towards the same goals. It's no use having a strategy of, I want to sell a new product into market segment A to customer X and a salesperson that understands our old product extremely well, keeps on punting and selling that product to the customer. Then there's a misalignment between your strategy and what's happening on the ground. Now, linking a reward system to these KPIs will ensure that that salesperson understands that he, need, he or she needs to understand and get to know the new product and to promote the new product into the system, into the customer base. And then there's alignment between the strategy and what's happening on the ground. Now, one of the things I think is extremely important is that we use COVID-19 to change people's reward system, to be more reflective of the times we live in. How many times do you see managers managing input rather than managing output? And I think COVID-19 has definitely shaken that tree because I saw for many years, managers are extremely happy when a person arrives at work before eight and leaves after five. And they say that's a high performing person. The fact that the person is playing computer games and does very little work is immaterial because they seeing the person sitting there and working or so-called working. That means they're measuring input. With COVID-19, I think a lot of managers were forced to measure output and really reward people for output. Another example, my son, his manager manages output. So they have a quick meeting each morning, set targets for the day, and tomorrow morning was the targets met, yes or no? How can I help you? What can we do? And we move on. That means whenever during the day or night he wants to work, he can work as long as what he has given is completed. Now his girlfriend, is experiencing exactly the opposite. She has a meeting with her manager every couple of hours to ensure that from eight to five, she is working. 
And that is not the way we need to manage our staff going forward. So the reward system and the KPIs, everything links back to the strategy. And this is the ideal opportunity to actually change our reward system because we've got a reason to change it and to be more reflective of where we, where we are today because this working at home is not going to go away. What about technology and strategy? Now, one cannot ignore technology, the importance of technology when looking at a, a strategy because technology changes and the, the speed and the magnitude of the changes is huge today. So maybe 20 years ago, you could ignore it or not quite ignore it, but it wouldn't have had that much impact on your strategy going forward. But today you cannot know technology. The use of technology and the data that comes with it that you can gather can definitely give you a good indication of where your strategy needs to go if you use it. A lot of people see technology as a disrupting force. I think we need to start changing that outlook and look at technology and how can it assist us to do our business better going forward. There is so much data and that available today that if you use the data correctly, then you can have a much better and stronger strategy going forward. Customer supplier relationship. That's also something that I believe based on technology and the changes in technology is changing dramatically. I believe the days of customer and suppliers having a win-lose relationship is history. If you've got a win-lose relationship with your suppliers, where you are always on the winning side and they're on the losing side, that is going to burn the company at some, some stage. Partnership type relationships, or we normally call it win-win relationships, will ensure both customer and supplier prosper going into the future. Based on the technology changes, we must ensure that there is a good win-win relationship between the customer and the supplier because we can't be everything to everybody anymore. That means we need to form partnerships with suppliers where they will bring certain technology and certain expertise that we don't have at a specific stage. And maybe we don't need to have it within the company ever because we've got such a good relationship with the supplier. Things change tremendously fast. And if we haven't got those relationships where we can co-develop and work together with suppliers going forward, that is definitely going to be to the detriment of the company. So from a strategic perspective, customer supplier relationships is important. And you need to look not only at your customer, but also at your supplier to ensure that those relationships is there and is maintained correctly. Now we get to the final point of both culture and strategy. And it is really communication. Communication is what keeps everything together. And communication is key to changing anything, changing the culture or implementing the strategy. Now, the question I ask a lot of senior people is how often do you communicate with everybody in the company? And you get various answers from once a year to regularly, monthly, I believe irrespective of the size of the company, you cannot communicate less than quarterly with every single person in the company. That means have sessions where everybody is in the session and you tell them about where the company is going. You tell them about the market conditions out there, the customers, the suppliers, the opposition, the competitors, what everybody is doing. So everybody in the company gets a feeling of exactly the status of the company. And a lot of people will say for a lot of different reasons that I think is nonsense, why they don't do it. 
you cannot expect a company to change a culture or to really embrace a strategy if they don't get regular feedback on how it is going, what is good, what is bad, what needs to change within the company. COVID-19 for me is a good example of good and bad communication. Think about how it started off in South Africa with the lockdown. President Ramaphosa had good communication, regular communication, and there was huge buy-in to what the government wanted us all to do. As time progressed, there was less and less communication. And what did that cause? It caused people to think differently, start with all speculation and things like that. And that destroyed the good work that was done right in the beginning. So good communication is essential for changing a culture, changing a strategy, or ensuring that the strategy or culture that you've got is maintained and successful. Now, in summary, I want to get back to the three points. Excellent customer service can be a differentiator in the industry. And that, for me, is not a strategy, but a culture that the company must embrace. And it is driven from the top. If it's not driven and believed that from the top, then it won't happen. Question you can ask your CEO is how often does he interact with customers? If you want a customer focused culture, if it's less than once a week, then I don't think it's a customer focused culture that is in the company. Having the correct strategy that everyone in the company understands and are awarded on is the foundation of any successful company. Think about your company. Is these two aspects in line with each other? And is there a good strategy in place with a good reward system in place and aligned with each other? And the last one, ongoing and clear communication is key to the success of changing a culture as well as any strategy. If there's not ongoing and regular communication from the top, from middle management, right through the company, then that will not work. The culture won't change and the strategy will not be implemented as it could have been. So I hope that gave you a bit more information and a bit more questions and maybe one or two answers on where your company can go as far as culture is concerned and strategy is concerned. The next webinar that we will be doing is sales. And if you want to contact Nuran Ali on this email address, then you can obtain the presentation of today as well as a write-up on this session, as well as ask any questions you would like to ask me. And I will get back to you either by email or if you leave a phone number and you would like maybe conversation that way, then I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you on culture and strategy and what you think about it, any issues that you've got, anything that I can assist to help you to improve the culture and the strategy of your company. I thank you for the session and hope that you have enjoyed it and at least learned something and question. For me, it is all about questioning what you are do, doing and if you're doing it the right way, that's fantastic. If there is things that you need to tweak, maybe I've given you one or two ideas of how to tweak it. Thank you and good day.